Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Vesti Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows about the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 13, After School Special. Written by Andrew Dabb and Daniel Laughlin. Directed by mm. Adam Kane. Yeah, I don't know. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating to me that this is an episode about high school. When it is, in fact, very, very, very representative of the epic highs and lows of Supernatural. A la yeah. high school football. You know? Yeah, I just personally, I think that Supernatural can't have high schooler characters at all. I think that they fall back into the dumbest tropes. Oh, this is true. This is true. I usually reserve this for like in the middle of the episode or whatever. But Mm -hmm. you are the person who lives in America between the two of us. Yes. Is it really like this? <laughs> no. It's not. Which is why it's stupid when it is on the television. Bruh. I mean, the- to be fair, I w- did, like, eat my lunch in the teacher's room for most of high school. So, like, maybe yeah. I don't understand the, like, intricacies of the lunch dynamic. But no, I... You sit with a friend group. Um, I feel like we okay. I don't even. I don't think we had cheerleaders though, so maybe that has something to do with it. But like, yeah, you sit with your friend group. You, I just, I don't think that there. I don't know. I'm sure bullying is an issue, but like, <laughs> the form of bullying that is, that exists here feels very cartoonish and I I know that slut shaming is a thing but like I don't I don't (laughs) think it is like this yeah I mean um I don't know if I mentioned this in the podcast before I've definitely mentioned it to you before but I'd uh I have a unique Um, high school experience Uh and I have been told by several people like looking into that experience that like it like my experience does feel very um what do you call it like nice (laughs) okay it it feels like um not not, not nice like it like cushioned what's the term like protected Uh, sheltered sheltered it feels sheltered yeah like, it, it feels like a sheltered experience. So, like, yeah, I could be like, oh, this this, this didn't happen to me, but, like, that probably doesn't mean anything. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like neither of us had a typical American high school experience, <laughs> but yeah. I don't, I don't think what is portrayed here is a real thing. Yeah. I mean, if someone messages us and, like, goes, like, no, my high school was literally exactly like that, all, like eat my words or as gray likes to say likes to say eat my ass (laughs) i said it once i don't think that counts as i did you like it it when you said it (laughs) if so you like to say it (laughs) because remember when we were like do men not know anything about fairy tales bedtime stories is so unrealistic and then we got an ass that was like men literally don't know who cinderella is yeah, so, so I don't, I don't know. Like I understand that like high school is difficult for everyone, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. But like the way like the American portrayal of high school is, it has always been something that has boggled my mind. 
However, I would say that like talking specifically to um, people who were in all boys or all girls school, mm-hmm. this does feel representative of their experiences. In terms of bullying? Uh, yeah. Huh. That's unfortunate. So, like, yeah. Like, because I have many friends who were from all boys or all girls schools, and this seems more like their thing. Hmm. Like the whole, like, um, like gossip culture or whatever. Yeah. That's what I hear the more from the girls, the all girls school situation. Uh-huh. And, um, friends who were from all boys school, um, talk about like people do beat each other up. <laughs> uh-huh. So, I don't know. Like, I mean, again, like, I come from a very sheltered high school. We all lived together, so we all were, you know, like, when yeah. you're, when you live with your classmates, it's a different thing, I feel. Mm. So, I don't know. It's just, like, I didn't experience it, but I'm sure there are people who do experience high, high school in this way. It's just, we are not them. I don't know. Like, you have to remember a very important thing about me. Mm-hmm. And it's that most of my exposure to, quote, American culture yeah, are from TV shows. Right. And... Like, House MD. <laughs> it was House MD and Supernatural for me. But the House MD is a less... It presents itself less like an American story than mm-hmm. Supernatural. So when I was yeah. younger, I really did think of Supernatural as like, oh, that's what the US is like. <laughs> so, like, yeah, ma- many things that happen in this show... Either I'm like, no, that's like an exaggeration. That doesn't really happen. Or I'm like, yeah, that's what the United States is like. I have no questions. For real. No inquiries. Yeah, like, you know that one post that was like, I thought Bigger Sense was real. And I was like, yeah, me too. Yeah. Like, why would it not be? Why, Literally, no. why would it not be? It's true. Well, first, well, this episode is kind of bad. Yeah, but what did I know about it? No, no, no. I want to okay. say first that I want to apologize to everyone who I have misled by saying that my favorite Sam episode is this episode. Yeah. Not true. Yeah. I'm sure there are better ones. Yeah. Yesterday yeah. at 8.57 p.m., I, I sent you the message I thought you said after school special was good. And I replied... Maybe it isn't. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. And and then my next message was, I did also say Dog Dean Afternoon is good. (laughs) So, yeah. I cannot be trusted over anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for your apology. What's your favorite Sam episode then? Huh? 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 (laughs) You know what? So it be, so it is. That's not a title of the episode. It's just something I know. I say. Yeah. Well, what did you know about this episode before going in? Uh, so I knew like that they were gonna be in high school. Well, I thought Sam was in middle school at first, but no, they're I both think in so. high school. Sam's just in there ninth are... grade. I think Sam's in ninth grade because if Dean's in senior year, like I guess like four <laughs> years below, Sam could be in eighth grade or ninth grade, depending on how they split it. <laughs> Um, now what you said about like let's put a 12 year old and a 24 year old in one scene and say that there are four years apart makes sense that literally yeah. looks like he could have the just casting entered middle school is so funny um yeah so i knew that like there was a scene with Sam and his English teacher where he, like, writes a story about his family killing a werewolf, and then there's, like, a whole talk about how you should go your own path, um, and that Sam has another scene where he talks to him when he's older, uh, where he's like, I did not end up doing that. Um, and then... Sad. 
So that meant, so I assumed that the case would be at this former high school that they went to as a result. Um, yeah. And I also knew that Teenage Dean would be wearing the leather jacket and would be called a loser by some girl in the hallway. Hell yeah. I mean, that's all there is to this episode, really. Yeah. Nothing else well, matters. I guess we're done. Well, thanks yeah. for listening to Busty Asian Beauties. Next I, week. I have a... <laughs> We start the episode with a very, very, very pointed road so far. Yeah. This road so far is like, I'll tell you what this episode is about. It's about how they they had a bad childhood. And they did. And it (laughs) sure did show that. It's just like, you know, it's basically season one rundown. We actually start off the actual episode with a very <laughs> odd um thing. oh my like, god teaser i hated this it sure was something so basically um it's your normal st- normal quote unquote normal <laughs> like american high school cafeteria where mm-hmm. it's like a bunch of people who are the popular ones it's like your cheerleaders and your basketball players i have no clue what sport they engage in like they're not football players i don't think why why because they don't have the like they don't have the because they're all dressed in they're all dressed in their uniform you say yeah and they don't have the padding why are they dressed in their i why are they i guess if they had practice in the middle of the day it would make sense for them to be dressed like that but like there's changing rooms I think maybe they were, like, football players. That is the classic jock, the football player jock, yes. Yeah. We're just, you know... I'm sure that's a completely American thing, because oh, that's yeah. the only place where people where they play, play American that thing. football. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, here, the major sport is basketball. It's always basketball. Always mm-hmm. been. Always will be, probably. Yeah. And if you're a girl, you play volleyball. And I was so bad at them both. Real. Hashtag non-binary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even non-binary. That's that's appropriation. For real. <laughs> yeah, no, you need to get better at basketball <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they're eating lunch and then somebody's like, oh my god, this girl's like a slay. That is literally what her voice sounds like. Yeah. I just, I don't get why every time they cast someone as a high schooler, like, they all have to have the same, like, if they're a high school girl, they all have to have the same fucking voice type. Like, a lot of high schoolers just talk normal. (laughs) One, they have to have the same voice type. Two, they have to have the same, like, plot line. Like, or, like, Mm. archetype or um, trope that they're falling into. Yeah. Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, like, oh, she's a slut. And she, like, like banged this guy and gave him the reverse cowgirl. Which is, like... Who says it gave becomes, like, him? a thing. Yeah. <laughs> gave Crazy. him the reverse cowgirl? Who says that? Anyway, um, the girl that they're talking about comes in. And she goes, like, oh, somebody's sitting on my spot on the table. And they just start, like, teasing her and being, like, uh, I have a cough, uh, uh, and then every time they cough, they go slut. It's so it's who crazy. does this? Uh, I mean, I'm sure somebody does. People are fucking evil and out of their mind, but <laughs> God. Anyway, sure. uh, t- the girl is upset by this, so she goes off. And she sits down at this completely empty table, right? And you know that the person sitting at the table is a loser because she's fat. She is fat. Anyway. I just, like, in Supernatural, like, I feel like they never... The only time they cast a fat actor is because they need them to be fat for a reason. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like usually the reason is they're a loser. They're fat. (laughs) Like (laughs) they're like literally, it's fucking. Yeah. Anyway, like the girl is being nice. She's saying like, "Oh, don't listen to them. They're like horrible people." 
but you know Taylor doesn't give a shit and tells her like oh my god don't feel sorry for me you're fat and you're ugly you pig and then yep. she runs off and then April runs off and it's a whole situation later that, that uh, like the uh, the next day Taylor is in the bathroom she's like fixing up herself and then April comes in and goes like oh do you think I'm ugly <laughs> no she doesn't say it like that she says it like this do you think I'm ugly <laughs> and Taylor goes no like I mean you know I'm sorry it was just yesterday blah 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 and then April grabs her and like bangs her head against the mirror, bangs her head against the sink, starts drowning her in the um toilet and in a really, really, really long sequence. Scene. It is like, so long. Like if you count like there's like five times that she like takes her head out and then plunges it back in. And we see that, we see like the inside the toilet POV shot and like yeah, just most supernatural murders are like over like fast but like i feel like the drowning of like the cheerleader in um 407 is also very extended or but also like i don't know there was the henriksen toilet bowl, bowl drowning i think the cinematographers just like really like toilet bowl drownings or general drownings and i don't ugh, whatever it's so long why anyway um she dies and april is like you're ugly. And then, like, she starts tearing up black goo. We got to a hospital where April's being held, and Sam's, like, in, like, white scrubs or whatever. What is he playing her. as? Like, just an employee there? It says an orderly in the transcript. And, you know, he's talking to April, and she says that it felt like she was possessed the whole time because... Like, her mind was in there, but she couldn't control her body. Uh, and then Sam asks if she saw black smoke or smelled sulfur. And she's like, no, what are you, crazy? Um, and then... Which is, like, it's such an odd thing to say, I feel. Because if somebody asks me, like, oh, did you smell anything weird? Did you see, like, a smoke? I'll be like, was there a gas leak? Like, <laughs> was there, like... Uh, like a chemical that made me yeah like or like this. was I yeah. hallucinating in general in some way yeah like I wouldn't be like you're crazy you know yeah. I don't know I didn't like it mm, right and also like the like Sam reaction shot is like longer than it seems like it needs to be like he seems <laughs> actually hurt by this because of how long the reaction shot is <laughs> Okay, not to um, yuck Adam Kane's yums. <laughs> yeah. This is the only episode he directed, and I would say it is a weirdly directed episode. Hmm. Like, there is a scene much, much, much later in the episode where Sam and Dean are talking to someone, and the someone is telling them a very sad story. And yeah. The, the the directing on Sam's face is he's sitting there sad and like and, guilty and or Dean whatever. <laughs> looks like he's posing for a lip filler ad. <laughs> then is, Dean is literally doing a model face. Like he's like <laughs> doing like the the pout. What does he call it? The, the blue not, steel. Not the blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally doing the fucking blue steel. It's crazy. <laughs> So oh, yeah, this funny. episode is the Wreck. Oh, God bless. Um, God bless. So Sam returns to the Impala, and he's like, okay, I'm pretty sure she's telling the truth about being possessed, but, like, she didn't see any signs of being a demon, or it being a demon. And Dean's like, okay, well, it was probably just a kid being mean. And Sam's like, well, I mean, we might as well check out the school, like, while we're here. And Dean's like, oh, you think yeah. think he was like you? Like, did he have a crush on the English teacher? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was he so in love with the English teacher? It's unreal. 
Uh, maybe. I didn't get too yeah. much of that vibe, but yeah. I mean, I feel like, well, we're supposed to read the English teacher as more of, like, a stand-in, like, positive, like, father figure or whatever, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm, but but things can get mixed up. Uh, Dean's like, oh yeah, like, we went here for, like, a month, a million years ago. Uh, like, and why do you want to go back so much? And Sam's like, I, I don't, I don't, this is fun, we're just doing a case. And, uh, Dean's like, okay, so, like, how are we gonna get in? And Sam's like, I have an idea. And then they start driving, and it transitions into the Impala back in 1997. What? I mean, back in the day, I was saying. Yeah. Back in the day in 1997. It's so funny how they didn't want to pay JDM to come back. <laughs> Not even for a voice line or anything. I'm looking up what age they are. Oh, I already looked up the actor ages. First I wrote down in my notes, Dean looks like a 25-year-old man and Sam comes out looking 12. And then I looked up the actors and like at the time of the release... Uh, Colin Ford was indeed 12 years old, and Brock Kelly was 23, so I was really close. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and we're supposed to believe that they are four years apart in age. Sam and Dean get out of the car. Dean goes, like, starts doing, like, your usual, like, thanks, Dad, and, like, turns to Sam and asks him if, like, he's got his stuff. And in this moment... Yeah, we just have to say that all the shots are engineered so that you cannot see who's driving the car because no one is driving the car because they didn't bring JDM back. Yeah. I was so impressed with... The voice. The the voice. Yes. It's crazy. He sounds just like Dean. In the beginning, he sounds exactly like like Mm -hmm. Dean. And then, like, later on, like... His like like younger voice like because especially when Dean comes back later as the gym as the gym, you know I'm tired because <laughs> I keep on pronouncing words the Filipino way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like Dean comes back as the gym teacher, yeah, and like the 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 contrast of like Dean voice young Dean voice and like Dean voice now it sounds like this <laughs> like it was so insane I just bust out laughing but like here in the beginning when you haven't heard Dean speak in like a little bit and then uh-huh. you just hear this Dean speak instantly you're like this is what Dean sounds like exactly yeah in season one or two yeah like, exactly it's crazy good. it's good Dean looks a little bit more enthusiastic about this whole situation. Sam, not so much. Mm. And um, his argument is that this is the third school that they've transferred to this year. And it's just November. Um, When does school start? Uh, around is it in August, September? August oh, or okay. September. That's crazy. Honestly, if I was John Winchester, I wouldn't even put them in school. Like, I'll give him one point for, like, bothering to enroll them. Because I don't think I would. Why don't- why didn't he just- Homeschool them? Get, like, a homeschool curriculum. I mean, he doesn't have time for that shit. I think he just- I think, honestly, I think the reason he enrolled them is that he viewed it as, like, yeah, free babysitting for, like, the day. Yeah. Anyway, um, Dean is like, oh, we're gonna just gonna be here two weeks and then we're out of here. And so I was like, yeah, we're out of here and into a new school. Great. Well, we, we sang phrases about young Dean. Young Sam is so cute. You know what? He is so cute. He's and so cute. Like, my immediate thought about upon seeing this was like, he looks... It's so impressive to me that Sam has kept this fuck-ass Bob for, like, his entire, <laughs> like, half of his life. Like, he's, like, what, 13 here? 14? Uh, he's and supposed now he's to be like, 14, yeah. Yeah, and, like, 
he's he's what? What age is he now? Uh, he was twenty two in season one, so twenty six. Twenty six, and he still has the exact same hair. Yes, <laughs> and I respect that. He was like, I found my haircut, and I'm committing yeah. to it. Good for him. Yeah. Did you notice that they they like sell old Sam's hair here, like? With the bangs down, I think to make him look more youthful. Um, Which is a old, fascinating. Wait, choice. By old Sam, do you mean the Sam who is older, twenty six years old, or is old Sam like, as like in the previous Sam, 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 the young one? Like our Sam, Sam. Okay, yeah. yeah. Huh, they, I did they not notice. put his bangs down to make him look younger, Aww. which is like a fascinating thing that they do. I feel because here in season, like season three specifically, and season four now. Like, he oscillates between no bangs and bangs. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, a big dictator of whether he's gonna be banged up mm-hmm. that episode is... <laughs> whether the episode is gonna be heavy on the is Sam evil huh. situation. Interesting. Because, like, like, when... Like, try to notice, like, when Ruby's around, his bangs are out of his face mm. and like like on one hand I understand that like when when like they're doing the plot relevant stuff they want Sam to appear more mature or like you know like more yeah. wary of the world stuff like that but also it's just a funny thought that like oh when Ruby's around he tucks his hair back <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's so yeah. real for that yeah. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, they do this interesting s- style of scene where, mm-hmm. like, both Sam and Dean enter the classroom and it, like, goes back and forth between them. And it's, like, juxtaposition of what mm-hmm. their experiences are like. Because Dean's experience is he comes in, he acts like a fucking misogynistic asshole to his yeah. teacher. Yeah. Calls her sweetheart and stuff. Yeah, and, and sugar, then, which it feels yeah. way worse for some reason. Like, they do this thing where it's like, oh, here's Dean, and he's, like, smiling at everyone, and he's being, trying to be charming. Yeah, and, like, practice the eye they show, girl. Yeah, yeah, and then they show Sam, and Sam's, like, avoiding eye contact with everyone, and then they go, do you have anything to say? And Sam goes, and, well, Dean goes... Uh, not really, but like you know, like he goes oh, not so really, cool. sweetheart. I'm so yeah, cool. Like, I love like, to uh, make teachers uncomfortable. Blah blah blah. Yeah, but with Sam, it's kind of like I don't want to tell anyone anything. Instead of like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm so cool and above it. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's fun. And then like Dean goes to sit on his chair. He has nothing, no books, no anything. It's nice that he checked that Sam had his textbooks with him, though. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, not me, though. Sam comes, sits down, he has, like, an entire bag, and a knife falls out, and, like, the guy yeah. beside him is like, oh my god, you have a knife? That's so cool. You know, Dean eyes up the girl from across the classroom. And with Sam, um, as this teacher starts discussing the boy beside him starts talking to him like hey i'm barry and the guy behind barry starts flicking his ear Uh uh-huh it starts this thing where the guy just keeps doing it and sam is like leave him alone stop it and then the guy's like what are you gonna take his place and sam's like okay sure yeah and they have set up this situation where there's a bully and there's the person who's being bullied and Sam and the being bullied person kind of friends and they're mm-hmm. gonna take on the big guy and by big <laughs> guy I do mean big guy cause this guy's bigger than them and that's, that's like, a, like a point that they make in the episode uh-huh. cause like he keeps calling Sam like midget yeah yeah also did you hear what the teacher was saying he said we you have to write a three page essay right now in this classroom and it's gonna be worth 50% of your final grade. Who does that? That's not... 
There's no participation points, no reading quizzes, no nothing. Also, the way uh-huh. that, like, he announces it and everyone groans, which implies that it's, like, a pop Come quiz. On, yeah. Three page. Like, what are you do? Are you trying to, like, have everyone die of a fucking heart attack? What the hell? Also, Hand specifically... Written. Handwritten. And also, he's like... Okay, so the, the the thing that you're supposed to write about is your most memorable family experience. And then he says, I'm looking for the brutal, funny, maybe even painful truth. Don't! Don't do that! Like, I don't... Okay, I just think that if you are... If you ever put your students in a situation like that and you ask them to do that, you need to, like, announce beforehand your mandatory reporter status. Though, okay, I don't know how it is in Illinois. But, like, I think the, the like, mandatory reporter thing is just that, like, if you're, like, a person in, like, a position of authority and then you know that, like, child abuse is happening, like, you're legally obligated to report it to, like, a legal authority. And, like, whenever, like, people are in situations like that, or, like, when they go to, like, therapy, like, people will say beforehand, okay, you can share whatever you want, but just know that if this thing is shared, I legally have to report it to the authorities. Like, I don't know why he was basically asking people to write about their child abuse, you know? Like, yeah. without a warning first about mandatory reporter status or whatever. So, oh, I don't know. This is this is a brand of English teacher that annoys me. Yeah. There's many of them. Mm. That's so. not true. I loved all my English teachers. Ugh. Anyway, like my ninth grade one, but anyways, then we cut to our older Sam walking down the hallway, and he's dressed like a janitor, and he just passes like, by, like Gabriel in Tall Tales. Okay, uh, no, I uh, sorry, I just Is recently a... read that say real fix, so <laughs> I was literally gonna ask like have you finally read the <laughs> say real fic uh yeah it's congratulations called... uh it's you talk like a man and taste like the sun by pretty dizzied slay slay yeah anyway um he like passes by a classroom and it's the same teacher that like introduced him to everyone and like yeah he's older slay we now cut to Dean in the gym, and I really, I hope that he dies. I hope that he goes back into the ground forever. So I guess the way the scene goes is that Dean's in a, a gym teacher outfit. Um, He's got, like, red shorts on, which is apparently important. Um, he's has, He has a whistle, and, like, he's starting to, like, I don't know, like, 15 people or whatever. And he's like, okay, today we're playing dodgeball. And then he takes a dodgeball and he throws it into the stomach of a kid who's, like, at the most three feet away from him, I would say. And, like, I know the ball absorbs some of the shock, But this is not too far from just him socking a kid in the stomach directly. And he's, like, a strong person. Like, that, like, this is not okay under any circumstances, but this is, like, this is, like, injury-causing level of, like, thing to do. And that's supposed to be funny. Um, and then... There's a line here about, like... Their prof is getting married in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, which, <laughs> which is... <laughs> means that she's a lesbian. Yeah, which means that she is a lesbian. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's which... that's a joke that you'll only get if you listen to our Kofi. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, we can just say it again. Like, we have a Kofi where we yeah, read on. the Super Wiki page of, like, all, like, queer characters are hinted to be queer characters in Supernatural, and because, like, one of gay them. marriage was only legal in Massachusetts uh, uh, during this year, like, she's getting married in Massachusetts means she's, like, getting lesbian married, probably. Which I think is supposed to be a joke about lesbian gym teachers. Um, 
Like, Ooh. yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I'm from Andrew Dabb and Daniel Laughlin, it is a boo. Like, they intended it to be like, ha ha, like, all you know female who, gym uh, teachers are masculine lesbians, which is, like, hot of them, but, like, not, they don't think it's hot of them. So, you know, one kid, Colby, is like, hey, like, the, the existing, like, PE teacher doesn't let us play dodgeball because it's dangerous. And Dean blows a whistle, like, in his face and says, take a lap! Like, when Sam comes in and asks if Dean's having fun, and Dean's like, the whistle makes me their god. Like, two episodes ago, you had Dean admit crying that he enjoyed torturing people in hell, and that the <laughs> it, he enjoyed the, like, I completely control that. <laughs> that he had over them. He, like, he enjoyed taking out everything he thought was wrong with his life onto, like, these poor people suffering in hell. And, like, that was, like, that's bad. That's evil. It's, like, it's awful that he did that and he should be ashamed and he is ashamed. This is, this is not too far off. But, like, it's funny. I just think that if he actually felt that bad about feeling good, that he would, like, really reflect on moments when having control over someone with less power makes him feel good and, like, really, like, work on, like, not giving in to that desire. Have we considered that, Dean? <laughs> Obviously we haven't. <laughs> yeah. When he's talking to Sam, he, like, opens, like, a like a bag of, like, ten dodgeballs and tells the kid to just, like, go crazy with go it. Go nuts, yeah. Yeah. So. Somebody's just, gonna fucking get injured. Someone in is going to die today because of this. I mean... Someone does almost die today, but unrelated to this. Um, so, you know, Sam comes in, he, like, says nice shorts, which feels homophobic for some reason, but, like, you this know what? This is a recurring theme. Like, the I'm shorts? sure there's a Dean's shorts supernatural wiki page. You know what? Ever since we did... The whole like supernatural wiki um bonus last time. Mm. I've just been on this fucking website <laughs> clicking at a random page and going on random pages. Yeah. Oh no, there's no like there's no like specifically for Dean's shorts. That's so sad. But basically like every time Dean wears shorts it's a whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah. And isn't there that Tumblr post that's just like, let's get this photo of Dean in shorts to like a million notes or whatever from like back in Supernatural's heyday? No idea what the fuck you're talking about. <sighs> okay, whatever. The Dean shorts post. Someone, someone out there knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so Sam says, okay, like there's been no sulfur or anything in the school. Uh, and so there's probably no case, and, um, Dean's like, okay, well, we should leave, but let's, let's eat lunch here first. He likes Sloppy Joe's, apparently. Um, and then Colby, like, runs by, like, clutching his nose, cause, like, it's bleeding, he's been hit, and Dean says, good hustle, Colby, walk it off! I... He's injured! <laughs> like, he was, like, Dean should be, like, at least giving him, like, tissues in an ice pack. Yeah. Ugh, whatever. I don't know. PE teachers just will not give a shit if kids are dying in front of them, though. That is how yeah. they often are. It is an unfortunate thing. I hope that training or whatever for PE teachers improves in the future have a, a cut scene to like a classroom and it's there's like a like a blender or something this is completely like impossible <laughs> we, like, why would like, they put the lid like this? on the blender i'm sure blenders like this don't turn on without the lid yeah there's an there's everyone has a blender in between them and there's no lid on them and it's like pairs of students and there's, like, a jock and a nerd. Um, and the jock is like, I need to copy your algebra homework again. And the the nerd is like, 
oh, because you're a stupid brain dead dick. And the jock says, like, that he's gonna shove his fist down the guy's throat, you little freak. Um, and then the nerd, like, he, he, bit, he just takes the jock's hand and shoves it into the blender and holds it there while, like, the blood spatters and everyone screams. Um, and then, hey. yeah, they, they take the guy out for medical care and then the nerd collapses on the <laughs> ground take the guy out back and shoot him <laughs> i mean we don't see him again do we <laughs> um and then sam comes in and he notices that you know the the there's like black goo coming out of the guy's ear and then he like wakes up and he's like what happened man these poor kids yeah I, yeah this is going to ruin and the rest of their lives. Sam comes in with teen. They're in the hallway. It's completely empty. And the reasoning for this is apparently there has been like an emergency assembly where they're talking about healthy ways to display your anger. Mm-hmm. And they're talking like, oh, the ectoplasm bubble blight must be a ghost. Apparently, if ghosts are angry enough, they can possess people. But there's no ghosts, no EMF, no anything. And apparently, uh, Dean has gone to the principal's office to get some <sighs> records. And then he goes, oh, uh-huh. and FYI, three of the cheerleaders are illegal. Guess which ones? What if he just drops that? That's all I have to say. He spent... He broke into the principal's office, and he went through every cheerleader's file to look at their birthday. Like, he he was in a... In a it was a tense situation where he had to get, like, the death info for, like, this case. And he bothered staying there for, like, an extra, like, five to ten minutes to do this. <sighs> Dean Winchester is like if a guy was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. He really, really, really is. Um, what did yeah. I think this is when I sent you I'm like if a guy wanted Dean Winchester to drop dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. I yeah. just and I don't it's also about how like this is like a running thing with Dean. And it's about how like like shows reflect what is considered acceptable during the time period and to the audience that the show is intended for. And, like, like I, the idea here is, like, oh, Dean's being kind of gross, but, like, you know, like, everyone sort of is like this. They just aren't brave enough to say it out loud. You know what I mean? Like, the show, yeah. re- like, reinforces the idea that, like, this is, like, acceptable behavior. And, like, and like I know that this is, like, a norm of the time because, like, House MD does the same fucking thing all the time, so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm tired. The end. Dean tells Sam that there has been one suicide on the entire campus. And it was back in 98, and it was this kid named Barry Cook. And Sam... Well, he knows the guy. It's the guy that was bullied to hell and back when he was here. Mm. Yeah, he uh, died in the girl's bathroom in the first floor, which is where the girl from the intro of the episode was drowned to death in the bath in the toilet. Mm. So, yeah, like. Sam figures that it must be Barry because the ghost is going after bullies and Barry had a hard time with bullies. So we go back to a flashback and it's Barry like walking down the hall. Somebody bumps into him. Books scatter everywhere. Sam plops down on the floor to help him yeah. pick his stuff like up. Like when I first saw that I thought someone shoved Sam too because of how fast he like dives to the ground to help him. They start talking and Barry is like oh 
I'm gonna get out of here like three years and then I'm off to Michigan State. Like, which they is have so good... funny because both of them look ten years old right now. And they we're, do. Su- and we're like, supposed to think that they're gonna be going to college in three years. I get that. That's like, like the point they're making is that bo- both of these kids look like small. Yeah, for their age. Yeah. Yeah, but damn, <laughs> they're pretty small. Yeah. Like the entire time I was, where like Sam was in the scene, I was just thinking like he's being bullied so bad for being tiny this man is gonna be six (laughs) foot four six foot four he's gonna be six foot four yeah crazy well you know doesn't t give you a little bit of a height boost depending on when you start it i think but just like a little bit right fair anyway sam's like trying to make conversation like he asks this guy like oh you like animals and like the guy's like, oh yeah, they're a lot nicer than most people. Then we go to Dean, who is in a closet making out with Amanda, mm. who is the girl he was eyeing earlier. And they start talking, and Dean's like, oh, why don't we watch a movie later? Like, you, me, popcorn, and midnight speed, uh, midnight screening of ice. Fit on your grave <laughs> at the Cynodome. Pretty privilege is the only reason that he succeeds at anything in the world of sex and romance. Is I spit on your grave like a common like knowledge? I haven't heard of it. Let me look it up. Oh, it's um it's like a rape revenge flick. Okay. Very brutal. Uh, I okay. watched the remake when I was very young, oh. and I have no idea why. Huh. I think I was with my older siblings' friends, uh-huh. and we were, and they, like they're like at that age where like, oh my god, let's do yeah, like yeah, like the whole like sending people beheading videos was funny sort of thing. Yeah, so like. They were like, oh my god, let's watch this very brutal movie. And I was also there, and I was like a couple years younger than them. Mm-hmm. And I just sat through it. I just watched it, entire thing. I oh. was completely fucking distraught after. Yeah, the Wikipedia page says that it's well known for having like a very lengthy gang rape scene. Yeah. Great. I can't believe they let me watch that. My friends, my sister's friends are horrible. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. I, how would, the, is this, is this a good date for anybody? Anyway, it's crazy that Dean says this. It's crazy. Yeah. And like, the girl like, is like, doesn't even acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Just goes like, yeah, I can't. I have curfew. Mm. And, um, Dean is like, you know, like, it's fine, like, just get out of your curfew. I don't have a curfew. My dad's not here. It's just me and my brother. And, like, we're just at the motel. And, like, we're just there. And, like, the girl is like, oh, okay. And Dean feels a little bit defensive. Like, oh, it's perfect. What are you talking about? And she's like, don't you miss your dad? Which like what a I weird understand thing to say. I understand that like this is more okay than most of the time where they try to hammer in like a oh but like what about you D? Yeah. Like, this is someone that like theoretically yeah. thinks that they're actually having a connection. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Right. They've been I mean, she seems to think they're going steady. So Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, an okay thing to ask, but we still, like, haven't seen her at all, basically, before this moment. So that's yeah. annoying. Also, I just... Okay, I do... I think it's interesting that, like, Sam and Dean's parallel storylines here are, like, Sam makes a friend, and Dean, like, has a girl that he's in a situationship with, and I, isn't, <laughs> like... 
Isn't the thing in in Bad Boys or whatever? Isn't there like that the Robin character that Dean connects to or something? The, yeah, yeah. I just don't like. Have they ever portrayed young Dean as having friends? Friends. Like it's just Interesting. like I don't think girls so. that he's like romantically involved with, right? Like I don't. I don't know of any, like, flashback episodes where he connects with... Anybody. Like, even in Drag Me Away From You, like, it's mostly, like, him and, like, that woman who, like, he sort of had a thing for when, like, they were, like, young. <laughs> right? Bruh, they made they made the two kids play Boggle. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's so Sam, the Sam gets episode. put with you his... You know what I'm his, talking about? Yes. So yes, and it's all like kill, death, <laughs> death, yeah. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, supernatural is so good. Yeah, no, but I don't. I just think it's interesting that like young Dean does not seem to have any friends. Yeah, like doesn't have any friends. It's just like girls that he's into. We switch back to, you know, Sam POV. And, uh, you know, Barry's like, oh my god, your brother is hooking up with Amanda Heckerling? He's so cool. I did not know anyone in a grade above me, basically, in high school, unless, like, we were in a class together. Like, I don't know, the idea of, like, the universal school hottie that, like, any guy who gets with is hot is, like, like cool for getting with is, like... A very foreign concept to me. And the fact that this, this ninth grader is like, man, I wish that was me. It's like, I know that this happens, but it's just odd. It doesn't feel correct. Uh, so Dirk shows up, um, and confronts Sam and is like, oh, hi, like, you still want to take Barry's place? This is the first time we see them, like, standing next to each other. So, like, this guy is at least a full foot taller than Sam. Yeah. And Sam's like, get out of here, Barry. And Barry says he's gonna get a teacher. Uh, so Dirk keeps trying to provoke Sam into fighting him, and he calls him a chicken. And then Dirk, like, hits Sam quite badly. Like, he falls fully to the ground. And Dirk tells him to get up and fight him, but at this point, the English teacher, Mr. Wyatt, comes in and stops the fight, and Dirk runs off. So, yeah. Um, and then we, like, fade from there into Sam and Dean at Barry's grave, um, salting and burning his bones. Later in the Paula, you know, Sam's upset, because Barry was his friend. And Dean says, well, he's at peace now, Sam. Which is not a guaranteed thing about any ghost they destroy. But, you know, I guess it... it what, is it helpful for Sam to hear right now? Maybe. Okay, like, when you are a ghost and then you die, you presumably go to heaven or hell. Do your ghost actions... Do they count? I think how, we've had... I think we've thought we? about this. Okay. Cool, because... With Mary in home. Uh-huh. But, like, she was nice as a ghost. She didn't do anything bad as a ghost, so... It wouldn't have tipped the scales for her. Most ghosts are, like, killing people. Oh, well. Well, I hope that their ghost actions... If they're taken into account that they're at least weighted with the... The... the Reminder that they were indeed in a different state of mind. Okay, so Sam is upset because he thinks that if John had let them stay at that school longer, like, maybe he could have helped Barry. And Dean's like, no, I mean, you it's not your fault and you couldn't have stopped it because, you know, he was already, like, so miserable and you wouldn't have made a difference. And he's like, I'm glad we got out of that town because I fucking hated that school. And Sam says, it wasn't all that bad. And Dean's like, how can you say that after what happened to you? What happened to him? 
he got punched two total times? I don't know. Um, I guess. I guess? I mean, like, the way the the school ended, the school experience ended yeah, for the both of them. Sam was living it up. Everyone loved him. Yeah. Sam, uh, Sam's back was being patted left and right. Yeah. So, yeah, it just felt like an odd thing to say. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, um, we go back, flashback, and it's Sam and Dean, they're young again, they're by the bleachers, they're talking about how the, the, the kid that, like, punched Sam, like, Dean's gonna kill him, gonna rip his lungs mm. out, uh, and, you know, Sam's like, Shh, it's okay, I don't need your help, and Dean's like, yeah, you don't, like, so why didn't you, like, punch him back, and Sam's like, yeah, I just I want to be normal, Dean. I just I don't I don't want to be a freak. He says freak, mm. and then later he gets called freak, and it's like the breaking point for yeah. him. He asks if John has called. I had to take a pause there and be like, no, you have to say John. You can't say Dad. You can't say Dad. Oh. So real. They have been there, I think, three weeks at this point, and then it's gonna be another week. Uh-huh. And Sam's like, well, at least you've got, you know, your girl Amanda. And Dean's like, oh, she wants me to meet her parents. Boo, I don't meet parents. <laughs> I had a thought. Mm. Like, if Dean wants so bad to not meet parents, just date a closeted guy. Like, <laughs> for fucking real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This would fix basically yeah. every issue that he has with relationships. It would fix every issue that he has. Period. Yeah. For real yeah. days. This is the only solution to every problem in his life. Mm-hmm. We go to Sam in his English class, and they're being dismissed, and Mr. Wyatt calls Sam over, and he goes... Oh, like, if it's about the fight, like, I'm sorry I didn't start it, though, so. And Mr. Wyatt is like, no, 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 it's not about a fight. Like, the assignment was supposed to be nonfiction. So, did your family actually hunt the werewolf last summer? And Sam's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, you can fail me, whatever. And Mr. Wyatt was like, no, I'm not, I'm not flunking you. I'm giving you an A. Which I think is a very irresponsible thing to do. He, like, I understand that to Sam, like, this is real. But if to you, mm. you think this person intentionally didn't follow instructions? I mean, the werewolf is like a metaphor, right? Creative nonfiction Boo. is allowed to do that. Boo! There's plenty anyway. of like creative nonfiction memoir that says things that doesn't actually happen because like the true part of the nonfiction is the feelings or whatever. I think it's fine. Everything I've ever read is true, <laughs> including supernatural. Including supernatural. It actually happened. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Mr. Wyatt asks, like, "Oh, is your family really like this?" And he goes, like, your brother is quite a character, and your dad seems very driven. And, like, he goes, it's good, Sam. Have you ever thought about pursuing writing? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Nothing. I just thought it was funny. Well, yeah, I am curious about why. I mean, why is Sam a law student? Yeah. Like, why law? can't write anything interesting i mean because it's not it's not even like he took a course and he was like oh i figured out while i was in college that i'm going to continue my studies and take law afterwards Mm -hmm. he was explicitly in pre-law so like going in he was like i'm taking up law yeah don't know so i don't i don't know why is he becoming a lawyer why isn't he studying to be a writer? Oh, well, I think Honestly, that he I needs think money. The reason why is because studying to be a writer is 
Um, <laughs> bruh. So, you know, you study to be a lawyer and then write on the side. Sure. Yeah. What's wrong with studying yeah. to be a writer? Like, I mean, a lot of class workshops are just about, like, making fun of how everyone is terrible at writing and you're not but like i'm sure there's helpful ones when you get to higher levels what's wrong with writing is the same reason that every like artistic kind of course is quote-unquote wrong you know mm. i love how that's your only response hmm. Um, I mean, I I am looking at Good Omens gift sets on Tumblr. I've closed the tab. Let's continue. That's true. I am also on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible. Why does anyone listen to us? We're like if we're terrible podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> and I lied. I didn't close the tab when I told you I closed the tab. I'm still looking at them. <laughs> I was still scrolling. <laughs> Where are we in the stupid uh, supernatural okay. episode? I'm, I'm I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Okay. A- anyway. Um. Wait. Sorry. Yeah. This is the most has... emotionally like this is the scene <laughs> that everyone cares about in the episode. We have to be better. Let's focus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sam goes. Um. Yeah. I can't really be a writer. I have to be in the family business. My dad is a. And then he saves face and goes. He's a mechanic, so I have to be a mechanic too. And. The teacher asks him if that's really what he wants to do. And Sam goes like, I I don't know. No one has ever asked me that. Never considered. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Mr. Wright presses and he goes, yeah, no, I don't want to do it. He says more than then, anything, like, no. no. Which makes me yeah. so sad, especially because Colin Ford is so cute. So, yeah, rip. Yeah. It, this it, this conversation did make me think about how like if Sam was if like the Winchesters were Asian, mm-hmm. like this is such a you know like the concept of like Asian values to being like a uh, family is priority above literally anything else. Mm. Blah blah blah. The yeah. whole thing. Yeah. yeah, you know, he's honorary Filipino to me. Yeah, for real. The the teacher is like, oh, you know, I don't want to overstep my boundaries, but I come from a family of surgeons, and I just didn't want to do it. So now I'm a teacher. He says like, there's there are like maybe three or four big choices that will shape your life, and you need to be the one to make them, not anyone else. And, you know, live the life you want to live. Sweet. Yeah, and, like, the shots on Sam's face during the scene are so nice. Because he's, like, clearly, like, listening and thinking very hard. And this is clearly, like... Like, I can tell from the way that the acting is working that, like, yeah, this is, like, a moment that changed his life. And that's very sweet. Sorry, Sam. So, back to the present day... You know, Dean's like, wow, okay, so we're coming back to the school just so you can talk to a teacher. And, you know, Sam's like, yeah, I mean, he's a good guy. And Dean's like, whatever, just go. Dean doesn't understand the bond between an English teacher and a gay boy. Exactly, exactly. So Sam goes inside the school, um, and, like, as he's walking down the hallway, there's, like, little flashes between, like, him now and him then and it's it's very sweet and then like there's a student who comes up to sam and she's asian <laughs> she she's japanese oh God, you're right yeah um i think we see i saw a flash of her file later and i think her last name is like tanaka or something so yeah she's japanese 
And, uh, I mean, you can also tell from her face, but, yeah. No, so, I mean, later. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yeah, no, we'll get to that <laughs> when okay. we get to it. I think that's that, when that I, that's what I me said. Wonder. I'm like if a guy wanted Dean Winchester to be tortured in hell for eternity. <laughs> so... Uh. Anyway, so she asks Sam for directions, and then he tells her, and then she Did you says, mention the, um, hmm? Dead Poets Society reference? Oh, I never watched Dead Poets Society, so I didn't care. Oh, well, I care. Okay. Yeah, Dean and, like, tells Sam to have a Robin Williams Captain My Captain, oh, Captain My Captain moment. Yeah. I don't know, I feel like... If Sam or Dean watched Dead Poet Society, I think it would, like, impact them, you know? But Dean has supposedly seen like, it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oh. So I do wonder what he felt watching it. Like, like when I watched it... Um, okay. You, Did you, you know watch it for, it for RSL? What's RSL? Oh, uh, Robert Sean Leonard. Oh, Robert Sean Leonard. No... I don't know if I did, but I did watch it. And, like, when I first watched it, I was in this headspace of, like, I mean, that's what happens. Like, literally. Mm. Basically, do you know anything about what happened? There's a suicide the at the end. Yeah, basically, and it's like, like it's this, sort of gay. It's this kid. It's this kid. Um, His father wants him to be, like, a doctor or something. I forgot. Mm. Like, he wants him to be something. And then he's like he discovers he loves art and that he wants to be a theater major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for laughing. <laughs> sorry for laughing. That's really fucking um terrible of me. He decides like he wants to like he wants to do art and he wants to perform and blah blah blah. And then um when he it gets revealed to his dad that this is what he wants. His dad goes like, "No, I'm sending you to like military school." Mm. Literally the next day, mm. and then he kills himself. Mm. And like when I first watched it, I was like, "Well, that's what happened." <laughs> and then, like a couple weeks later, a friend watched it and like was crying mm-hmm. and was like, "Good lord!" Like. Like, how hard is it to just accept your child? Like, how hard is it to just, like, let your child live their life and, like, do things that they want to do? Mm-hmm. And, like, like you know, let them be their own person. And that was, like, the, f- like, that was the first time right. that I felt, like, an emotion regarding the movie. I was like... Oh, so that's what it was trying to tell me. Okay. <laughs> and I, I was like... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> with like, I mean... You know, like... I'm sure with many... Because, like, a lot of the time when you grow up in a specific upbringing culture, mm. it's very difficult to, you know, remove yourself from that kind of mindset. And I feel like that's what was happening with me in the movie. I was like, that's just what parents do, and he should have yeah. just sucked it up. Like that—that that yeah. was genuinely what I thought. I get and it. And I like, and then so like somebody else pointing out to me like, but there is an alternative. There is an alternative to just sucking it up, which is which that is not people suicide. listen to you and consider your feelings. You know? Yeah. And I was like, oh shit! And like this line did made me think like. In that, um, in between, like me immediately after watching Dead Poet Society, and me after my friend watched Dead Poet mm-hmm. Society and made me realize that, like, there is a different perspective to this from like what I have been raised to think. Yeah, like where does Sam and Dean lie in that? Um, uh, what do you call it when there's like Special? many parts of? Spectrum. <laughs> um, I think oh, that's I spectrum. Mean, Dean Dean is a suck it up guy, and Sam Dean is, is a how hard me. is it to to accept Dean, your child yeah. guy? 
Dean is definitely me at the at like immediately after watching and being like, yeah, man, <laughs> should have just gone to the military school, like, bro. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Dean's response to the suicide and family remains is she should have sucked it up and watched Juno. So, yeah. Yeah. Dean is absolutely team suck it up. And yeah. I think Sam would be crying and being like, oh my god, he's just like me for real. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, so, um, you know... The, the girl asks him for directions, and then when he gives them, she says, Thanks, Sam. And then she gets a knife and stabs him in the stomach, and then she says, You got tall, Winchester. We know who the ghost is now. It's Dirk. Fight, and she's kicking him, but then he gets out um, a jar of salt from his pocket and then forces it in her mouth. And then the ghost, like, leaves. Flies off. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like a like a black smoke-ish looking thing. So like, okay, so you can just eat salt, and then it like gets the ghost out of you. Cool. Cool. Um. Right. And then, and then the girl. Oh okay, yeah, you take the next scene. Um. And then um. Seventeen are you know hanging out afterwards so and Dean's Sam's like patching himself up but Dean gives him like some like cloudy alcohol to help him or something uh and then Dean's like that ghost is dead I'm gonna rip its lungs out which is like what he said about Dirk in the flashback so it's parallels but I think it's corny it's not like Dean's like this protective every time Sam gets injured. Like, it's a weird thing to have here. Um, and they speculate about who it is, and they're like, wow, I have no clue. Uh, and then he's looking at a file, and, okay, what he finds out from the file is that the three students who got possessed rode on the same bus, but what he says is Martha Dump Truck, Revenge of the Nerds, and Hello Kitty rode the same bus. So. <laughs> Crazy. So. <laughs> so. You know. <laughs> yeah. When he said this line, I had no idea what the fuck he was saying. Right. Well. Like, the only thing I caught was Martha Dump Truck. I was like. Oh, he's talking about the fat girl. Yeah. Um, and I was the, like, what do you think mean Hello Kitty? And I did not <laughs> connect in any way whatsoever that the girl was Asian. Oh, like, never Japanese in my mind was I like, oh, it's because she's Japanese. Bro. <laughs> this guy will say anything. Yeah. Yeah. He sure will. <sighs> Yeah. Fucking anything. Like, my main feeling during the previous scene was, like, thank God this is Sam and not Dean, that, like, this, like, poor high school Japanese girl is collapsing in the arms of after she gets unpossessed. But, yeah. like, Dean makes up for not being there by saying this. So they decide that maybe the bus is haunted and the ghost is able to possess a body on the bus and, like, ride it into the school instead of being tied to the location. So they go to the bus, and I think this is part of, like, a funny, like, video or some other. Hmm? Like, is this also in the, like, funny line delivery, vi one of them, Not one that... of those videos? Uh, which part? The, like, Dean going, come on, ghosts. Maybe. Ghosty, 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 come out wherever you are. Maybe I don't remember it very well. Yeah, but like they're like looking at the bus and they're figuring out why it's in the bus and it's like, yeah, maybe there's like a hangnail that's left in the bus or whatever. And they're looking around. Okay, here's my question. How do they ever get rid of a ghost if people shed skin cells all, to all over the place while they're alive? Is that the question? 
No. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting question. Because if, like, a leftover hangnail is enough for him like, to still be haunted, what, like, like, I have, like, hair in the in the sewers of many a city somewhere. You know that, that like, line about how, like, you're made up of old stars, like, the atoms of your body mm-hmm. are, like, from old stars. Like, I'm sure there's also atoms of me of, like, somebody who used to be a person yeah like what is the like minimum like what is the mi- minimum like amount of like matter yeah that has to exist Good for question. a spirit to be able to be there but mostly i want to ask do do school buses really look like this i think so really god that must be so fun is I it? think our roads are just too small to accommodate, like, school buses like this. Okay, yeah. Uh, <sighs> they're still looking through the bus. And Dean finds that two weeks ago, somebody got a new driving permit. And it's this guy named Dirk McGregor. Senior. And Sam recognizes him. Because he knew his son. Yep. Because this is Dirk McGregor Sr. Mm-hmm. And his son is Dirk. Yep. And Dean is like, what the fuck? Did you just know everybody in this school? He's so real. Yep. So we yeah. get a flashback. And, you know, Dirk's pushing Barry around again. And Sam comes in. He's like, leave him alone. And then he like, Barry like scampers to hide behind Sam and it looks very he asked for no pickles of them and yeah you know Sam tells Barry to go get to the bus and then you know Dirk's like oh why aren't you gonna fight me are you scared um come on lose Chester which I am gonna have to give it to him that's pretty funny um lose Chester yeah and then like you know, he's all like, come on, like, let's see what you got, etc., etc. Um, and this is after he's already pushed Sam down once, and Sam's like glaring and looking away. But then Dirk says, come on, freak, freak. And then Sam gets up and he takes a swing. They are fighting. Sam is way better. He's getting his punches in, he's getting his kicks in. And he is ruthless. Like, he keeps doing it. Like, Dirk's on the ground, like, on his knees, and, like, he gets him, so he's, like, on his back. And then, like, he just he just keeps doing it until, like, Dirk is, like, fully, fully on the ground, knocked over, flat on his ass, etc. It is brutal, and it is fun to see. Uh, and then, like, he goes, You're not tough. You're just a jerk. Dirk the jerk. <laughs> And we get the, the, just the worst, like, voiceover acting from all the surrounding kids where they're like, oh, Dirk the Jerk, that's pretty good. Dirk the Jerk? Yeah, yeah Dirk the Jerk. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, and yeah. so the funniest thing is these kids are, like, in ninth grade. Uh-huh. Probably, they right? They can swear now. And then you have, like, <laughs> you have, like, fucking seniors over there, like, Wearing, like, Letterman jackets, like, full-on jocks, watching this fight, putting their hands up, pumping it in the air, going, Dirk, Dirk, Dirk. Yeah. And it's like, what the what? fuck are you doing here? You're a whole ass, like, 18-year-old. <laughs> yeah, and Dirk's like, oh, I'm so sad, and he runs off. God, yeah. so, so, so funny. Like, wow, I love acting. Uh, and I love writing. So, this this is to lead into, like, a voiceover from the present day where, like, they're talking to Mr. McGregor and, like, like the voiceover is, like, him going, like, so you were friends with Dirk? And then we see them and Sam's like, uh-huh, yeah, totally, in high school. Uh... And what we hear is that Dirk died at age 18 because of 
drinking and then drugs and an overdose. And at this, I was like, did Sam calling him Dirk the Jerk drive him to drink? <laughs> and you know what? It literally did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> God. <laughs> like, sorry to that fictional person, but what a funny thing to be the outcome of this episode. Like, the whole time Sam was like, oh, I feel so guilty and responsible for Barry's death because maybe I could have stopped him. Like, no, you are responsible for the death of someone at this school, but it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Right, so he said that Dirk had a lot of difficulties at school because kids bullied him for being poor and they called him dirty and stupid. Um, and Sam's they like, they, they, they bullied him? him. <laughs> and yeah, he's like, yeah, they even had a nickname for him. Dirk the Jerk. <laughs> God, that's so funny. Also, Jerk is not the nickname for, like, Someone who you think is, like, poor and dirty and stupid. Like, jerk is the nickname for someone you think is mean. Like. Like, I guess at the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, dirty Dirk. Yeah. Good alliteration, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you did one. You know, at That's the top enough. of my head, it's not that large. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. Something with the McGregor last name? Ah, uh, no, I really Back can't. loser. Ooh! Yeah. Um. Anyway, and then he says something happened with his mother. So apparently when Dirk was 13, so like the year before ninth grade or whatever, um, his mom died. And before she died um, of cancer, Dirk was basically her primary caretaker because Mr. McGregor had to work three jobs. So he watched the whole process as his mom faded away and died. And that caused him to have bad emotions in his life. Uh, and Sam's very sad. Like, he's like, oh my god, like, I had no idea. Jesus. Like, Face very and open. And side. Dean on the side <laughs> is blue ceiling like there's no tomorrow. Like, if this was a Zoom call, Dean is definitely looking, looking at, at himself, himself in the, on in the, the little yeah. window on the side. Yeah, he's pinned oh. himself. <laughs> he pinned himself so that... If it looks like he's looking at the middle of the screen, it doesn't look too obvious that he's looking at himself. Yeah. But it's very obvious, Dean. Exactly. It's very obvious. Like, his lips are pursed just so the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so Ugh. he's like, oh, so we, since we can, so that we can pay our respects, uh, can you tell us where he's buried? Uh, but he was cremated. And Dean says, all of him? And Mr. McGregor bothers answering. He actually says, I kept a lock of his hair. And Dean goes, that's nice. Where do you keep that? <laughs> and, I mean, at least Mr. Gr McGregor's making, like, a face where he's like, this is kind of weird. But he still answers. He says that it is on his bus in his Bible. Now we go to the bus. There's a guy in the bus, he's just driving, mm -hmm. and then he just starts driving real fast. Yep. And then, I don't know, it hits something, I have no fucking idea what's happening. Sam comes in and sees that the driver has Dirk in him, I don't know, and, like, Dirk starts going like, oh, what are you gonna do, shoot me? They wrap a rope around him that's soaked in salt water, which is very fun. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah. And so he starts, like, you know, hurting a little bit from the salt, and he's stuck there. And Dean comes in, like, like, um, looks around, is like, 
okay, I'm gonna look for the uh, hair, and then tells everyone, you'll be okay, don't worry about it. And someone goes, wait, aren't you the PE teacher? <laughs> and then he goes, well, it's a little bit of a 21 Jump Street situation. The driver and then he was stealing weed. Like, the commotion. Yeah, and then he goes, the driver, like, is selling pot. And then, which is so funny, because they shoot him immediately <laughs> after. <laughs> I mean, not funny, but you know. No, I know but, what you mean. Like, everyone on the bus is like, there's a death penalty for selling pot. <laughs> like, imagine being one of the guys on that bus. Like, oh my god. Like, and then, yeah, he can't find the hair. And Dirk says, like, you're never gonna find it. And then Dirk starts taunting Sam, like, oh my god, you guys, you jocks, <laughs> you popular kids. You think you're better than he everybody. Sam was a I'm jock and a popular jerk, right? kid. <laughs> Sam was not a Sam jock was or a, a popular loser. kid. He was a loser nerd. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, like... You like you people are gonna get what's coming to you, and Sam takes the high route and goes, puts down his um gun and says like, "I'm not evil. You're not evil. We were just scared and miserable, and we took it out on each other. That's what happens. But after you go through that, it gets better. Sorry that like you didn't get to see how it gets better." He literally did give him the it gets better speech. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, I like that he goes, like, I'm not evil, Dirk. And then he, like, pauses a bit and he goes, I'm not. Like, he's trying to convince himself. Because, like, yeah. yeah, he is trying to convince himself. Uh, the way they do this character, right? Like, oh, he's a... B- it's like the typical, like, oh, he's a bully, but he's also miserable. So, like, Whatever, whatever. Do you think they handle it with, like, complexity or... No, I don't know. Whatever. Like, no, probably not. I, yeah, Yeah. I mean, the way that he is... Yeah, I feel like we needed to know more about how he was later bullied. To really understand this, because the way that he's positioning himself as someone who was school version oppressed by the jock class, like, it, like, is he not part of the jock class? Like, I have no idea. What, what was the situation there in later years? Yeah, the thing about bullying is. It's, you know, like Dean's dilemma from last episode about, like, I did this bad thing and, like, I hurt other people because I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes a lot of bullying cases and also, like, stuff like um, sexual assault, sexual harassment, very hard to forgive, very hard to rationalize. Mm. As, like, acceptable. I mean, obviously, like, different levels for different situations, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, a lot of these things fall under the category of it's hard to accept because you weren't, like, for example, theft, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you can justify, like, you needed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, stuff like that. But, like, with things like this where the pleasure is in the humiliating other people. Mm. Like, making other people feel small. Making other people feel bad. There is, like, a sense of, like, that's, a, that's like, a moral issue. Mm. Like, that's, you know. Do you, do you get what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, I think so. I think I've said this, like, in the podcast before, but, like, like, if I were to rank the people that have wronged me in my life, mm. the people that I still resent the most are the people who have bullied me. Yeah. You know? And, like, yeah, people go through shit. But, like, when it's a matter of, like, oh, like, humiliating, like, 
the whole point of this mm-hmm. is to like make you suffer. Yeah. There's no other reason. It's like it's a lot more difficult. So I don't know. It's um, it's. I mean, it's always gonna be more complicated than it is, mm-hmm. or how supernatural presents it because this is supernatural. Yeah. But I don't know the way they did this, where it's like, like what Sam is saying, like you did bad things, but like it's, like he's not saying like you were good, like it's okay, you know. Yeah. He was saying like. Yeah, like you were terrible. I was also probably terrible, but like, um, we were scared and miserable and blah blah blah. And like, the important thing is that after that, you just get better and it gets better. Yeah, I like a part of there. There is like some pushback from me to that, but like also like yeah, that's probably true. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I thought I just wanted to share. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And Dirk says, well, you know, it's not going to get better for me. Which is true, because he is dead. Yeah, and, and he's going to go to hell when he dies, probably. So this is preferable. And then, you know, um, he breaks out of the rope. Many things happen, such as Sam shoots him twice. And then the ghost escapes him, and there's a student. Student comes down, tackles Sam, which is what I use as evidence to say that it's a football yeah, theme. Got it. And then um, so they start fighting. Mostly, like, the guy just beats Sam up. Mm-hmm. And then Dean goes on to find the hair, and then he starts looking for it on the collapse like on the guy who just got shot yeah like he's looking for pockets also, just to stuff. clarify the and guy got he... shot with salt he's not dead yeah yeah he's not dead and then he goes like hey buddy this isn't this isn't what it looks like okay which like who cares? i don't know if that's like a distasteful joke or if that's like um hey don't worry about it you know i what think I mean? it's a like, distasteful it actually... joke I don't think yeah, Dean's way, trying is... to be nice or reassure him. Yeah, like, there is a way to say probably this exact same sentence in a way that is reassuring, but yeah. Dean is not doing it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he finds a lock of hair in the shoes eventually. Um, lights it up, baby. And then the, the guy collapses on Sam. Yeah. And they do this bit where... Sam's like, oh, I'm, I'm like, this guy's heavy. Can I get a help? And then Dean goes, he's giving you the full cowgirl. <sighs> oh. Hmm. Oh. Like, first of all, that's a high school student, though we know that doesn't stop Dean. Secondly, I don't, like, it, like, Dean waits so long before he decides to to continue to not help Sam and make a joke that's unfunny. Like, it is painful to be crushed under a large weight. Help him, you asshole. Like, he's struggling to breathe. But yeah, I don't know. Just the fact that they bring back the thing from the first scene, which we already thought was so stupid and awful. We cut back to the past, and Dean's making out with a new girl, not Amanda, in the closet. And Amanda, you know, catches him and pulls Dean out. And Dean's like, oh no, we were, like, studying for the history test. Uh, And Amanda's like, no. And then Dean says, like, like, is there, like, a book of phrases that asshole boyfriends can say to make them seem like asshole boyfriends that he's, like, reading straight from? Because he goes, uh, he says, Come on, she baby! Means Come on, to me. baby! She means nothing to me! Don't be mad! What the fuck? I... Did he think that was gonna work? She gives him a dressing down... She says that she's not mad. 
She just thought that underneath his whole I could give a crap bad boy thing, there was something more going on because she sees the way he's he is with Sam. And she says, like, you know, but actually you suck and you spend all your time trying to convince people that you're cool. But that's just to cover up the fact that you're just a sad, lonely little kid and I feel sorry for you. And, yeah, I mean, this is all true. I do feel like I wish that she was more developed as a character before this happened. But, you know, this seems like something she was probably drafting with her friends beforehand. And I support that. I support the the friend group drafting a breakup text sort of situation. And then Dean... Dean starts, like, basically shitting himself and crying in the street. Where he's like, you feel sorry for me? Don't feel sorry for me. You don't know anything about me. I save lives. I'm a hero. A hero. (laughs) And, like, everyone nearby is just crossing their arms and being like, can you believe this guy? And, like, he's like, what? What? It's so funny. Get his ass. (laughs) Meanwhile, Sam's coming in and everyone fucking loves him. They're all high-fiving him, being like, Oh my god, Sam, good job, good job with Dirk the Jerk. And all that. And Sam's like... Like, he is, he's, like, happy. And it's nice, because he held himself back from fighting earlier, because he didn't want to become, like, the school freak or whatever for it. But, like, in fact, this is a place where he can be accepted by acting on what he decides to act on. But... Sadly, Dean gets a call from John that and they have to go. Finally, we have modern day where uh, oh, before Sam- they go, um Barry waves goodbye to Sam from like a window and Sam waves back and it's all very sad. Back in modern day, Sam goes back to the school. Very brave decision, I would say. Mm -hmm. I would not have done it. He goes to see Mr. Wyatt. And he introduces himself. And at first, like, the guy doesn't really recognize him. And then, like, he gives some more information. And he goes, oh yeah, you wrote that horror story. And then, like, he asks, like, what advice did I give you? And Sam said, told me that I didn't have to go to the family business. I should make my own choices. And then Mr. Wyatt's like, oh, so you followed your dream, huh? You did your own thing. And Sam said, yeah, for a while. I think I went to college because of you. But people grow up, you know? Mm -hmm. Responsibilities. But you took an interest in me when no one else did. That matters. So thank you. And Mr. Wyatt says, Well, you know, the only thing that really matters is that you're happy. Are you happy, Sam? Mm. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah, it's like a long pause on Sam's face. Long pause. Does not reply. On Sam's beautiful (laughs) face. Yeah. (laughs) What are the... I can't believe Gomez is a British show. Yeah. Well, they're like if people were British. They are. Well, they're like if angels and demons were British. You know, Neil Gaiman really That's likes true. to just make sure that everyone knows that because they're angels and demons, they they don't use silly human labels like gay, even though they get called <sighs> the F slur in books. But okay, you know what? Whatever. I can't be salty about this forever. And also, he made them kiss. So like, I mean, whatever, whatever. <laughs> And Crowley's non-binary, like, for realsies, so that's nice. Anyway, who give a shit? What are the responsibilities Sam thinks that he has? Like, okay, I'm, I'm in, or just running through the timeline. Season one, he has to stick around because they have to find, uh, John. Season two, he decides to stay because he wants to honor John's wishes for him. And then, I guess following that, 
he can't get out because he has to get Dean out of the deal and now he has to stop the apocalypse. Right? Like, that's that's the timeline? Poor guy. What did we think about this episode? Um, I wonder if Sam considers the demon blood thing doing his own thing or just, like, doing someone else's thing, but at least this time it's not my family's. Uh, I think it's still part of the responsibility thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's Because the way the he the world. interfaces with it, it's not particularly, like, something he enjoys, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just something that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this episode is okay. I think maybe the fact that I remember all the important parts kind of takes away from it. Like, maybe this would have impacted me more on the first watch. Yeah. You know? But now that I'm quite familiar with what it is, not so much. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Um, best line, worst line. Honestly, my worst line is the Martha Dove Truck yeah. Revenge of the Nerds Hello Kitty I mean line. mine is three of the cheerleaders are legal yeah best um, line I think um, my best line is I think mine is when uh, Sam says no one's ever asked me that before when Mr. Wyatt asks like do you actually want to go into the family business cause it did make me emo mm-hmm. I don't know what my best line is. Were there any moments that you cared about? You said there were good moments in the show, right? What were the lines said in the good moments? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I like that um, Sam was trying to connect with Barry. Like, I don't know. We don't really see them interact much other than, like, get in the bus, Barry, you know? like I think they cetera, do have, like, a, a nice moment where when the teacher tells Sam to stay behind, like, Sam and Barry are hanging out, about to, like, walk to the next class together, and Barry's like, I'll wait yeah. for you outside, Sam. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think the kind of, like, school friendships where the two of you are, like, attached at the hip like, I feel like that was the moment that I was like, oh, yeah, they really are like that. That's nice. I think I like that um, Sam, you know, when, like, Dean was saying, do you have your lunch? Do you have your blah, blah, blah? And then he goes, like, your butterfly knife? And the butterfly knife is supposed to be, like, kind of, like, the odd one out, right? Yeah. And we know that Sam is afraid of being a freak. Uh-huh. And being different. So, like, when the when the knife falls out of his bag, and Barry sees it, and it's like, oh my god, that's so cool. Uh-huh. I think that's a nice... It was a nice moment. ...line. Yeah. Because, like, this is something Sam is incredibly insecure about, and he's afraid it's gonna make people dislike him. Mm-hmm. But actually, it's something that people think is cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Just like him beating Dirk up. Oh, yeah, I like also that. Also made people think he was yeah. cool. Well, spread those sheets, baby. Okay. Um, so, misogyny? Yes. Um, there was the cheerleaders shit, and... I mean, the whole opening scene is Lots of it. so stereotypical, and I'm not ugly, you're ugly. Ugh. I, yeah, there's definitely stuff. Is this like a, I think, it's like a one or a two. More two? I think it's a two. Yeah. Racism, we've got Hello Kitty, and I think that's the only oh, one, definitely. so that's a one. One. And then homophobia, I think there is... A bit of that. Which one? The full cowgirl, and then... I don't know, there's just a lot of... I don't, the shorts? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that you is You said, homophobia. like, the shorts part is a little it bit felt homophobic. homophobic. Uh, and there's the joke about really the gym think... teacher. 
getting married? Okay, one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this sure has points in it. Okay, IMDb. I would say maybe, um... I understand that this is a beloved episode. Yes, I also understand this. 8.9? I'm gonna... I'm always wrong. I've been really bad at it. But I'm gonna go... What did you guess? I'm gonna go 8.8. Okay. Bro, it's an 8.6. Okay. Not as high as he thought it was. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that it's not actually that beloved. The cutest episode ever! Is it? This one says this is the first 10 of the season. Like the top 10? Well, someone didn't watch Chris Angel of the Douche. <laughs> it's a douchebag. I mean, the season only has 22 episodes in it. <laughs> no, first Oh, the 10. first 10 like, out of 10. Okay. Someone yeah. also didn't watch Lazarus Rising. Though, actually, we had some issues oh, with yeah, Lazarus Rising. Oh, yeah, that was also Rising, the season. <laughs> mm. people, people who hate the Angel Demon story arc are so vocal about it. Yeah. Well, that's it for this episode of Busty Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 14, Sex and Violence. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at pastationbeautyspot at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! I don't... There's just really no media that is set in a high school that I have found to be realistic. Just because, I don't know, it's yeah. such a mythologized time of, like, a person's life that I feel like every writer decides to get jiggy with it. I think, like, well, the only, like, high school story that seems sort of true to anything are, like, the the scums of the world. Like, okay... I will think about whether I'm going to include this in the podcast or not, because it okay. is doxing. <laughs> but there's actually a movie about my high school. Okay. And um, basically, it's like, f- so four years of high school, right? And it's like, mm. it's basically like four stories for every like school year, mm-hmm. you know? Like, it follows four different sets of people. And... Mm-hmm. It was set during the Marcos administration here in the Philippines. And so it's about like um, high school life and it's about like being a student activist, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But it is also very much like what it felt like to study in my school. Okay. So, yeah. So if we're talking about media that represents my high school, yeah, like the movie Pisay, P I S A Y, is representative of my high school experience because it was in my high school and they filmed it in my high school, and also that's part of the history of my school. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, like there are people who are from my school who died during the Marcos administration, and you know, stuff like that. Okay, I take back what I said about SCOM being a realistic portrayal of the high school experience. Like, maybe it is like that in, like, Norway or whatever, but, like, the characters care way too much about where they are on the school's social hierarchy and talk about not wanting to hang out with a loser crew too much for it to seem like a realistic thing for anyone to think or say. Yeah. I just... I just don't think I was aware of any kind of social hierarchy in my school. Like... I mean, there definitely was, but, like, who give a shit? Yeah, I feel like it doesn't matter to anyone besides the so-called popular kids. 
bro. Oh. I just looked at the IMDb page mm-hmm. for that movie, and it has an 8.7 rating. Wow. Not like bad. Like, one of the best episodes of Supernatural kind of rating. Anyway, I do recommend this movie. It's good if you want an insight on uh, Filipino student activism during the Marcus administration. I think it's pretty good. Mm. <laughs> Slay. Slay. Anyway... God, we have not talked a single moment about this episode. Wait. Plus. <laughs> what if every time I sneezed, I just put it at the end of the episode? <laughs> so we can just have a sneeze. Comp. Um, yeah. A co- collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll do it. So here on out. Every single outtake from here on out is a sneeze or a blowing of the nose. So true. Have fun. (laughs) (laughs) Someone's got to be into that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, the, the, the thing is, um, I've, like, did like did you play dodgeball in like school? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is like a common game, right? Mm-hmm. I have incredibly, incredibly vivid memories of being in grade school, mm-hmm. and like whenever we played dodgeball, I was always the first one out. Oh, and I had. <laughs> like watching this i had like a visceral reaction in me because like i remember like literally whistle starts and then like (laughs) first throw i'm out (laughs) oh (laughs) and like well like my my teacher being like huh who got who got hit and then like meeting his eye and like it's just seeing the complete disappointment in his face oh <laughs> i was like just like you know chester for real yeah so is pe and like in the schools you've been to like pretty similar to usp I don't know what USB means. I don't know um, what that means. I don't know. You get in your your gym clothes in the locker room, <laughs> and then like, they're like, okay, go run laps, and then they're like, okay, we have a sport unit that we're doing right now. Go play volleyball with each other. Also, I'm like a mean person who clearly only took this job because I like to exercise authority over children and I assume that disability is laziness and then that's like well, every day yeah. of your life I was actually not um, around a lot for a lot of PE because of my health mm-hmm. so like I mean sometimes I was and then at some point I think I just was like yeah, let's not do the whole, like, I'm gonna suffer through it thing. Like, let's just get give the med cert and leave. Yeah. Like, I do remember one time, like, we had to do the plank, and... God. I was doing the plank, and then, I, like, I stood up, and my friends were like, you are bleeding. And I, mm. I looked down at my arms, and it was, like, just blood everywhere. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm never gonna do that ever again. And yeah. I just never, like, did the plank ever again. No. Correct. Uh, like, um, so like, like P for me, like I was lucky that, um, like as my um skin worsened, my teachers also got better. Uh huh. But when I was like in seventh grade, we had a teacher that like, if you were like we had swimming right, mm-hmm. and if we were afraid of the water she'd like she was so unforgiving she'd like scream at you to jump oh and like i remember like that summer we went out swimming and my uncle who was very nice very nice was like telling me like no like jump in the pool jump in the pool and i started crying oh (laughs) so yeah like physical activity sometimes traumatic Yeah. yeah yeah 
But yeah. like, I mean, I have I friends didn't who really, like genuinely yeah. do like have diagnosed PTSD from like their PE teacher's behavior. So like, yeah, it's I just I I the scene is supposed to be funny, but I can't. Yeah, by the time ninth grade rolled around, I just wasn't doing PE anymore. Like yeah. I was just like not at least not the really strenuous stuff, like. Not swimming, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. I I did like a little bit of what's that? The throwing softball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was fine. Yeah, and then just like I, John Winchester, like, just like John Winchester, he was in the cuckoo or whatever. What is that called? <laughs> the, the corn the jerkers. The, <laughs> the corn jerkers. <laughs> 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 It was the well, the corn jerkers and the, the what was the other one? <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, the best name possible. Um yeah, I mean what's that? Hmm. I also like if I was gonna do anything, I did not wear the prescribed uniform. I wear I wore long sleeves and pants mm-hmm. to everything. Yeah. And um like sometimes my my teacher would go, You should like remove your like plaid shirt that you're wearing <laughs> over your uniform. Winchester <laughs> while, while we're playing basketball. I'll be like, No, I don't think so. <laughs> so yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. I mean this is this is so many stories again, this is gonna be hell to edit. But mm. uh this is different school, right? When I was in grade school. Yeah. I had a teacher who was... I don't know what was wrong with him, but there was definitely something wrong with him. And he was just constantly angry. And mm-hmm. I was the class president, so... Mm-hmm. I always had to be the person who was like... Like, when he's like, somebody give me their book so I can figure out where we are on the topic. Mm. I'll have to be that person. Yeah. And then one time he got pissed at our class and he threw my book oh, to no. the floor. And then he picked up a very huge roll of duct tape. Like uh-huh. like the thick one, right? And it's yeah. still full, so it's still pretty hard. And he threw it across the room and it hit me right no! on the face. No. It, oh fuck. It broke my glasses. Oh and my god! For like, for like, for like weeks after that, my nose bled constantly. Oh my! Did you? Did anything no. happen to him? No, no, I don't did, think so. Did you get? Did you get financial compensation for new glasses? Bruh, no, absolutely not. I, but like, were people of in higher in authority positions in the school aware of this? I don't think so. I don't think anybody complained. Okay. Like, we just accepted that there was this completely horrible person who was teaching us. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, he was... It was It was a nightmare being his student. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well... And so, like, when, when Dean threw that ball, I, did, I was reminded of that teacher. I was like, yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Um... You know, you know who are lesbians? Who? Computer science teachers. <laughs> huh. That's my hot take. I don't know if I've had a lesbian teacher before. I've had like, uh, like damn it, and teachers, you probably had but... more comp sci teachers than I did because it's your major. Sad. Sad. I mean, I've only had male comp. Holy oh no, I've had like shit. one. What? I saw a, a video of, like, the street where my school is in. Oh, and it's flooding, right? It's flooding like crazy. Mm. Go go on with your... Okay. I just got so fucking surprised. Yeah. And, like, one kid... Yeah, one kid is like... Oh, wait, sorry. You... I need to mute my computer because you just sent me a Discord message and the beep just got recorded. (laughs) This is so unbearable. Oh 
us for recording a podcast and I'm sending you random <laughs> tweets. <laughs> I mean, I am playing 2048 while I am talking. (laughs) Earlier I was answering a YouGov survey for points, like, for money while I was talking. (laughs) Oh, boy. Wow, that's a lot of water. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention, because I wasn't looking at my notes, I was only playing 2048, that when Sam (laughs) enters his English classroom, uh, that the whiteboard says that they're reading The Outsiders, which I read in seventh grade for class. Um, Aww. What is it about? I think um, you have told me what is it about, but I have forgotten completely. It's like about teenage gangs, like the, like, greasers, and like, class Mm -hmm. divides or whatever the fuck and like i I think like someone gets murdered and like like the main character's friend who's like one of the few black kids around also like gets blamed for it and there's like a whole thing and then it ends with like i don't know people getting shot by the cops or whatever um but like i think the important thing about it is that like essie hinton the author of the outsiders okay first has been staunchly staunchly against like queer interpretations of the book and of like the various like homoerotic friendships between the characters and like i think she's watched supernatural i think there's like something she said about supernatural um okay the super wiki says that she okay, she visited the set in 2008 in September 2008. Um she visited it during the filming of Yellow Fever. <laughs> she cameos in 706 slash fiction. Um she in December 2011 she said that she writes supernatural fan fiction and it's slice of life stuff with no plot but it's fun. Eric likes them. She's so she's written supernatural fan fiction and shown it to Eric Kripke. Okay. I need to become a famous writer. <laughs> like world renowned. Yeah. And then I need people to be like, so what was your first um dabble into the writing history? And I'll be like it was supernatural fan fiction. Yeah. Real. And then Eric Kripke has to read it. Let's see. Also, oh, okay. Apparently she's... She has... Mm, oh. Oh, right. I, now I remember why people on Tumblr are mad at her. Um. Oh, she said that Destiel, like, there was a time when she said Destiel wasn't canon, but she reads Destiel fig. And people were upset oh, about I that. Love that. Me, bitch. <laughs> Me, and I never say bitch, so you know I mean it. Um, yeah, and I guess her other shitty supernatural related things is that she like, what she she, just... no, actually, whatever. I don't even care. <laughs> anyway, so no, what is it? Um. Oh, apparently she just made a joke about like Meg giving Cass sponge baths while he was in the asylum. Or the whatever. The psych ward. Yeah. Anyway, who cares? So, um... Like, our school buses are... You know what an FX is? No. Um, I'm gonna look up what it is. No, it's not an FX. It's, you know, those like... Well, it's, it's... Do you call the school bus school bus? Um, yeah, or the bus. Do you call it anything else? No, it's just school bus. Okay, bus. so in the Philippines, we call it school service. And mm-hmm. it's this kinds of um vehicles. I love how I'm just, like, talking to you, like, I'm just sending you this stuff, and, like, nobody who's watching <laughs> knows what the hell I'm talking about. Uh-huh. But, like, try to explain what the what the vehicle looks like because i don't know what to to explain it as other than this is what the school bus looks like it's like sort of sedan sized 
and there's two sections of it. Like, the first section looks like probably like a regular van if you cut it off at the head, but like, it has, it's like, like painted yellow and there's like stripes on the nose, which look interesting. Yeah. And then like behind it is like, like a box, like it's a vehicle and it's the same color and it's the same material, but it's just shaped like a rectangular prism. And there's, like, really only room for two windows, and that's where the seats seem to be. That is so interesting. Uh, what is it called? Like, what? what is this vehicle called? I don't know. Um, I don't know, maybe school sedan? Maybe. It is a it is a sedan type, and like on the inside, it's set up like, um, like the the seats are like opposite each other, so like you're like horizontal. Mm. You're not like if you're like sitting down, you're not facing forward. You're facing the side, mm. like in a train. Yeah, and like. It, I think it's modeled after Filipino jeepneys, which is basically a jeepney in the Philippines is, you know what the jeep is? Like yeah. the brand of car. Mm-hmm. The truck. Is, is it a truck? I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. It's like the, the jeeps used to be the vehicles that American military used in the Philippines when they occupied the Philippines. Okay. And then when they left, we just had these military vehicles. And then Filipinos started um, taking them and refurbishing them, mm-hmm. painting them, making them commercially accessible. Got it. So now we have um, this stuff. <laughs> I'm just sending you pictures. Well, how the hell are we going to show the people what the hell I'm sending? Uh, you could just, we could just put them all on a Tumblr post. Yeah. Not the video of your school flooding, though, because that's doxing. Bro, that's crazy. This is what a jeep looks like. Yeah, and, like, the concept is, like... I mean, now it's not anymore, but, like, back in the day, it was, like... It was military vehicles that's repurposed to become... Yeah. And, like, it's the same seating arrangement. Like, you see how, like, the person is sitting on the side, right? Like, they're sitting on the side. Mm Mm-hmm. So that is also the format for the school service. Yeah. What's fascinating to me is, like, when you're in the bus, where do you put the bags? Your bags? Like, overhead? No, like, like, next to you on the seat or, like, on the ground in front of you. Do you not have trolley bags? What? What? Like, do you not have trolley bags like for Like, bags school? with wheels? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think some people have, like, backpacks with wheels, but, like, it's, like, basically just, like, a suitcase sort of situation, but, like, with a backpack instead of a suitcase, and you can, like, put down the handle and, like, still store it on the ground next to you. Ah, uh, is it this big? Um, probably smaller, maybe. Okay, well, I'll cut, I'll do a good job cutting most of that out. (laughs) Alright. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's just, it's always been fascinating to me when I see, like, school buses in United States. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we absolutely do not have, like, the infrastructure to have like buses that big send you to your house yeah although i think like it's not like a house thing like i feel like some of them are like they drop you off like the side of the road and then you walk to your house Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think like over there is that is that the case um for school buses yeah no there's usually like like maybe like I don't know a couple of bus stops and then your parents still have to get you from the bus stop or you have to walk home ah, from the stop okay. down here it's like house service that's nice like, straight to the house 
Well, anyway, 